on December 28th, I think, uh, 2014. Edible Acres, more documentation on biochar. This has been my big thing for this winter, it feels like. Um, did a bunch of videos on cone pit method, which you can check out. And so now I'm doing trials on portability and seeing if I can do uh, make good quality charcoal that's efficient insofar as how much smoke is produced and speed and all that, but in barrels or portable units. And you can see this is a 55 gallon drum cutoff. Definitely finding that on their side works better for me. And I'll talk about those details in a minute. Uh, and this is a barrel that was here when we bought the property. It looks like a 55 gallon drum, but this is more like 80 gallons, maybe. Very heavy. Uh, pretty hard pressed to be able to lift this by myself comfortably, but it rolls well. Um, so last night I did a char session. There was a huge windrow of debris I used as an opportunity to prune up branches. You can see my pole saw out there, clean up stuff. Uh, out in the woods. You can see this is where my nursery is, my like zone one in the permaculture use idea. Um, and it took about six hours. I was able to, believe it or not, this was completely filled with charcoal. I'm guessing that was about 60 gallons or so. And this one you can see I didn't take anything out of yet. Um, and this is with the cutoff, I'm going to guess maybe a yield of about 40 gallons. So about 120, 100. 100 and 120 gallons of char. Um, I feel like the quality is really up there. You know, it's got the, it's everything's charred through. Very little amount of branding. You know, where they didn't char all the way through. I've already plucked a few of those out. For what it's worth, if you're going to quench something like this, and you really want to at the so last night, you know, done enough, ready to go. I plucked out with the shovel the logs that were really not going to finish off. You can see I tossed them over here. I can always just put them in waterways and stuff t for filtering. Um, but what I'll do is then pour water over it and stir it with the shovel. Little gotcha with this, this morning when I came out, you can see there's a hole there and a hole there. Those are on the barrels anyway. You can see I've, I've oriented them on the side so that they allow air to get injected in as it goes. But this morning when I came out, these were actively smoking. That oxygen coming in was able to rekindle some fires right around these spots. So I lost maybe four or five gallons to ash. Not the end of the world. You can always expect with char, especially if you're doing it in this kind of like loose and informal way, that it's going to be an alkalizing element because there will be some ash in it. Me can look overall almost nothing, but there's a little fleck here, you know, little down there. So, what's great with this though is that I now this barrel I did the charring intentionally right here. You know, I scraped an area. This is where I normally bring wood chips, so it's like my nutrient depot. You can see I got some big piles of charcoal queued up. This is where I make my potting mix for my tree sales and plant sales, and so now. What I'm doing is I'm getting ahead of the curve and actually making my potting mix for next year right now. And so this barrel was completely filled last night. What I was doing as the other one was finishing off, kind of stacking functions and being efficient, you know, that was finishing. I would go and stir it periodically. Um, this was the first one that I quenched because this one finished first. I was using the shovel to scrape soil, wood chips, a little bit of perlite, other stuff basically clean up this old organic matter pile shovel full shovel full shovel full shovel full <laughs> shovel full and by throwing it on like a slope like this it tumbles down and it mixes together and so basically this will mellow I'll add a bunch of um, urine and fresh compost or um, finished compost juices to this to really inoculate it with life but I think this is a, a pretty hardy mix and especially end of December we'll get a couple freeze thaw cycles through it by the spring once I go through this with a hay fork and stir it one last time and put it into pots this for trees in particular this should be just an awesome potting mix a little bit more pine duff than I'd like right now but again the char tends to probably be more alkaline because of the additional ash so a little bit of pine in there 
I'm not going to worry about it too much. And trees seem to be pretty tolerant of a little variability. You know, I wouldn't use this to start tomato starts and stuff. It's a little bit more coarse than maybe I'd like. You see little worms in there. Uh, but for potting up trees, for potting up raspberries, things like that. And then as a nursery, when I sell these plants, I'm selling not only the plant, but um, the possibility for people to inoculate their soil with biochar and King Strafaria mushroom. So all through here, this is also my Strafaria inoculation bed. So people come away with biochar for their soil, the plant that they actually wanted, and edible, saprobic, beneficial mushrooms for their soil, all um, in the process of me cleaning up slash and debris from the woodland. So I get a tidy woodlot or tidier. It's clean, it's easy to navigate, it's aesthetically pleasing. It doesn't have to be cleaned up, but it's nice to. I'm not chipping anything, so there's no gas involved in this. And this is all one human power instead of, you know, five horsepower or whatever with no fossil fuels, and I'm making this carbon that'll be persistent in the soil for a long time. Hundreds of years, thousands of years, I don't know. But anyway, food for thought. If you wanted to mimic this one seems to be really promising because it's easy to lift with one person. It's just a 55 gallon metal drum that was pretty sound overall. Didn't have one of those fitted lids. <clears throat> it's just a drum itself with the two bungs on the top. I'm going for the circular shape. I don't know that this is the best, but it's something to try. If I were to do it again, I would cut right through the middle first and then cut down a little bit, cut down a little bit, and fold it over so I'd have wings of metal that would help focus twigs back in. A lot of crap falling out that I had to like take a hay fork and throw back in last night. If that metal was still there as wings, it would help keep the material in. And I drilled one, two, three tiny holes on the bottom so that the quenching water can go through it. Uh, so when, later on I scoop this out. I have these like dollar store woven polypropylene bags that hold like 30 gallons each for a buck and um, so I'll scoop that into those bags for bringing it out into the woods if it was loaded with water it'd be a lot heavier than it needs to be um, and this is just to quench it it's not to inoculate it this is pond water puts the char out and then once it's cool I'll add the urine the compost tea the vermicompost tea whatever to then actually inoculate it because again this is just charcoal now this is not biochar that's biochar Right, it is in its charcoal with bio, with biota and life. Anyway, play with it if you're interested. This is a great thing if you're in a wet spot or, you know, it's winter and the ground is frozen or you can't dig. Or let's say there's a logging operation that came through and left a ton of slash in the woods. Or you're doing that. Well, you can now get your logs for milling, your firewood from the tops, and then the slash bits turn into charcoal, all with just some 55 gallon drums and some buckets. Uh, for each 55 gallon drum that's going to be filled with charcoal, provision for a minimum of 20 gallons of water for quenching. I would encourage gallon for gallon equivalency, so provision for 55 gallons of water and then you'll be very safe. You'll know you'll be able to fully, fully put it out. I've lost a few batches to thinking that I quenched it, coming back in the morning, and I really hadn't gotten the bottom fully quenched, and these things came right back, and then I had a pile of ash, <laughs> which is much easier. You know, you can just do that by setting crap on fire, and that's not very useful. So have more water than you need, and you get this. I mean, this is a pretty nice yield for processing slash and hanging out in the evening and it's fun to hang around fire so that's got another yield to it as well I take sticks as I feed this I jam sticks in there and smash around and so I'm almost at a pulverized charcoal before it even comes out of the barrel you know I hit it with the shovel as it goes I find that as if I smash it up with a shovel while it's really hot it tends to pulverize a lot better um, and I put sheet metal underneath this so I didn't ruin the lawn right here. Maybe that's something you want to do, I don't know. Anyway, ten minutes later, that's my 
<laughs> was going to be a really brief video, but 55 gallon drums really easy to get. This I just did um, took a metal saw blade for a jigsaw. Uh, and I took a metal drilling thing, drilled a hole here, drilled a hole over here, as you can see, and then with the jigsaw real slowly. If you're going to do that, be very careful when you get to these bumps. It kicks around like crazy. You could scatter and or shatter and um, get you wear ear protection and uh, eye protection when you drill and cut these. But yeah, just cut this out and then a couple little holes in the bottom. And I can get... And then back of my truck I can get, put six of these things. So I can do a couple hundred gallons of char remotely anywhere. These are the other tools. Hay fork is nice shovel with all metal is really nice. Some good heavy gloves are great and tons of water. Have fun. Enjoy making charcoal in the winter time.